Hey, I'm John, Director and Chief Curator of the Museum of Portable Sound. This is Doctober. Doctober! Throughout the month, we're going to be talking about a footnote in iPod history, a device that made the iPod a little less portable. We're talking about the iPod Dock. There's no better place to start talking about the history of iPod Docks than with Apple's own iPod Universal Dock. The iPod Universal Dock was first released in 2005. This was four years after the original iPod came out. However, the iPod Universal Dock didn't support the first two generations of iPod. It only supported third generation iPods and above. Leave it to those double speaking scamps at Apple to name something universal that doesn't work for everything. So why don't we take a look inside the iPod Universal Dock. Here we have the original box that it came in. Uh, it's very tasteful. The back of it here shows you uh, what the Universal Dock looks like and which models of iPod that it can actually function with. We've got another box inside of it that opens up. Inside this is the actual iPod Universal Dock and these are a series of inserts for different models of iPod. So here's what the dock itself looks like. It's basically um, a piece of rectangular plastic, a 30 pin dock connector, which is proprietary to Apple. On the front is an infrared port to make this compatible with Apple remote controls. And then on the back, there is a 30 pin port along with a line out and an S video out. And you could also get video out of these with a composite cable that you could pick up that would run out of the line out. Then on the bottom, it's rubber. It has an Apple logo and it mentions the iPod. There were two other models of the iPod dock that were released, uh, one in 2007 and one in 2010. And when they released the 2007 model, they dropped the word iPod from it. So they wanted their docks to be known as being compatible with both iPods and iPhones. So essentially all you would do is you could lay it down. You would plug a cable in to the back of it. So why don't we do that? And then this cable, obviously a USB cable, would be connected to your laptop or your iMac or whatever computer you were using. And then you could take your iPod and basically shove it inside this, connect it to the dock, and then it would connect to your computer, which it would also do if you just connected it to this thing, but it wouldn't stand up. What does it feel like when a person is losing his mind? Essentially what the iPod dock was for, it makes your iPod stand up. The iPod dock takes your iPod and makes it a little less portable. Isn't that special? Let's test the iPod dock with a few different models of iPod. So here we have a fifth generation iPod classic. How about a sixth gen? Perfect. A third generation iPod Nano. Wonderful. Let's go crazy and try the very first model of iPod Touch, which is essentially a, an iPhone that can't make phone calls. Siri, operate! It stands up too. <laughs> now, I've always wanted to try one of these in a, in a dock. The original iPod Shuffle. It doesn't stand up. I've fallen and I can't get up! It really doesn't stand up. Well, like we said before, the Universal Dock isn't actually all that universal. Because the iPod Universal Dock was only compatible with devices that were equipped with Apple's proprietary 30-pin dock connector, the Apple Universal Dock eventually became obsolete itself. In 2015, Apple replaced the Universal Dock with the iPhone Lightning Dock. Here they decided to ditch the word universal altogether. I guess they were probably tired of everyone pointing out that their docks were not universally compatible with all of their devices. It's just a hunch. And all the other 30 pin iPod docks that had been manufactured by third parties, which we'll be looking at the rest of the month, also became obsolete. Tough luck, Logitech. <laughs> so there you go. There's our first edition of Doctober. Doctober! If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe. Also, check out the rest of our website at museumofportablesound.com and maybe even book your own online visit to our museum where I'll meet with you personally 
and take you on a guided tour of over 325 sounds. Book your own online visit today at museumofportablesound.com online. Mm-hmm.